I'm going to ask you a question. Is prayer a burden to you? Is it more of a duty than it is a pleasure? Why is it we don't say that about the one we love the most? If you, you are happily married, you love your mate, do you call intimacy, do you call those times alone work? I think we have it all wrong. The Lord is saying, why would you consider it work to come into my presence? Now, we know the Lord delights in us. The scripture says, how fair and how pleasant art thou, O love for delight, Song of Solomon. David said, he delivered me because he delighted in me. Now, I thank God that he taught me a long time ago that he loves me and delights in me. He joys in his people. He sings over his people with delight, the scripture says. Can you imagine the Lord dancing and just exuberant over his children because of their love and because of his fellowship? We know he delights in us, but do you delight in him? The scripture says, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. The Shunammite said, I sat down under his shadow with great delight. Now, I've always wanted my prayers to be a delight to the Lord and a delight to me. I didn't want it to ever become work or a sense of duty or obligation or trying to fill in time. He's not obligated that way. He obligates himself to the delighted heart. Now, this matter of coming into his presence with delight is not just glee or exuberance. No, it's, it's much more than that. It boils down this, and this is what the Holy Spirit told me. Delight in the Lord is simply this. I would rather be with Jesus than anyone else on earth. I would rather be with him more than my wife, more than my husband, more than my family, more than the President of the United States, more than all world leaders, more than any counselor, more than any famous person. I would rather be with him. That is the light. I would rather spend time with him than with anybody else. Now, if you can't say that, you don't know the prayer that's pleasing to his heart. If you cannot, in every crisis, say, I'll be all right, I've got to get to him. I'll be all right as soon as I get to him. Who do you go to when you're in trouble? Where do you go when you have a crisis? Who's the first one you get in touch with? Is it your husband? Do you get on the phone and call a counselor? Some of us don't know any other voice than the voice of a pastor or a counselor or a husband or wife or a friend. Don't even know the voice of the Lord. Who do you go to? Folks, can you imagine what it must do to the heart of the Lord when he is there waiting with all the resources, everything that we need to comfort and strengthen and empower us, and we run off to somebody else, or we sit and brood right there in his company? We just sit there and will not run to him? Folks, this delight is something that God recognizes. This is something the Lord sees. When you come to him and everything, every day, doesn't have to be a crisis, but any time, you just, just say, I've got to get away. In fact, if you really delight in the Lord, everything that hinders your coming is going to bother you. You will say, well, I love people, but I've got to get away. I've got to spend time with him. He's waiting, and you'll get lonely. You'll get heart sick. I know, I know what's happened to me. If I go a day without the Lord, without time alone with him in real intimacy, I get lonesome. I get terribly lonesome inside that, because it's a kind of lonesomeness that no human being can feel. No one can touch that spot but Jesus. Nobody. I love my family, but they can't touch what's inside my heart. I have to have him. I've got to run to him. And when Jesus sees you want him more than anybody else, you go to him first. That is the delight. He wants to know that you prefer him above all else. That is delight. Coming to him with delight does not mean you cannot come to him with sadness and grief. So many times I've come into his presence, I mean burdened and heavy with grief and sadness in my heart. The scripture makes it very, very clear that he wants us to come even in our saddest moments. Don't hide from the Lord. Don't run anywhere else. Go right into his presence. Weep it out before the Lord. Tell him everything that you're going through. Let him have your sadness. And what strikes me is that when I am overcome with grief and sadness, there's a tendency in all of us to just shy away and say, Lord, let me work this out first and then I'll come to you. I don't want to bring it to you now. That is so wrong. You are ever loving, ever merciful. I come into your courts with this burden. I come to you broken. I come to you cast down. I come with sadness. But folks, you still delight in the Lord coming to him first, preferring him above all others. You still come with delight.
Even though you don't feel happy, you don't feel joyful, the real meaning of delight is that I go to Him first. I prefer His company, the pleasure of His company.